So to continue um, from the larynx, the larynx starts right here at the epiglottis, and the epiglottis is the structure that that prevents food from entering the trachea when you're swallowing. It's normally open for breathing. So, uh, as I said before, it attaches to the hyoid bone, uh, and uh, it's continuous with the trachea. And what it does is it keeps the opening open so that air doesn't have to push the sides open. It, it becomes, uh, it's called, called what's a patent airway. The tube is held open. Uh, it routes the air and food to the proper channels. And this is also the place where the vocal cords are. It's where voice production happens. There's a bunch of cartilages. It's made out of cartilage. It's the Adam's apple and a bunch of other cartilages. We're not going to get you to name them. Uh, if, if you're interested, you can look at them. They all are named for um, their shape or uh, things like that. Cuneiform means wedge-shaped. Cornicate means horn-like, uh, etc. Um, the uh, epiglottis is the only part that we care about, and it's what it covers, it's the, the garbage can lid. It covers the inlet during swallowing. Ends up looking like that in a sideways thing. Now, uh, there are some folds in the walls of it. There's two folds. One is called the false vocal cord, the, the vestibular fold. Uh, and the other are the true vocal cords just below it. Um, the we're not going to get too much into what the uh, how voice is produced, but basically there are there are ligaments that uh, attach from the cartilage. They they have some elastic fibers in them, um, and they vibrate when air rushes past them. They, uh, they're like guitar strings, and they produce a tone, and the, uh, and the tone depends on the tension in them. Um, I'm not seeing where... Above it is, uh, is the vestibular folds that are not involved with sound production. They, they help with something called the Valsalva maneuver. They, they close the glottis off. They close it off when um, you are, are kind of straining at stool, things like that. So um, when you look down somebody's throat, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see the glottis, which is the opening, uh, and you can see the various vocal cords and things like that. So what happens here? In When we speak, you are opening and closing the glottis and you release air in little puffs. Right? And the pitch of the noise that's made is dependent on a couple of things. It's just like a guitar string. If the guitar string is fatter, it makes a lower pitch. If the guitar string is looser, it makes a lower pitch. If the guitar string is longer, it makes a lower pitch. You get a higher pitch on a smaller string that is tighter or shorter. That's why you fret, to make higher notes. Um, so the pitch is determined on that. The loudness it's, it, of a guitar it depends on how hard you strum the strings. It's the same. The loudness depends on the amount of air that you move past, the force of the air that, that is vibrating the strings. And it makes basically a buzzing sound. And then the words are formed in, in the muscles of the pharynx and the tongue, the lips. Uh, that's what gives the words their shape, their enunciation. Um, now, there's also a resonant chamber. We already mentioned that in the the um, the 
uh, sinuses and in the na nasal cavities and things like that. And that gives us its shape. So really, the vocal cords give it its pitch. Your tongue gives the words its shape, the, its enunciation. There are people that have their larynx removed, usually from cancer, and what they do is they put a, a vibrating uh, machine against their throat, and they can make words, but they can't make pitch. So when they do it, and I've had patients with this, what they they do is they turn on this thing. It looks like a kind of like a flashlight. They hold it against their throat, and it makes that sound. So when they speak, they it ends up coming out sounding like, "Hello, how are you?" Uh, because they can't vary the pitch, but they can actually enunciate the words quite distinctly, um, because that all happens in your mouth with the, the tongue and soft palate in your lips um, so you can close off the larynx and like I already said it's it's called Valsalva's maneuver it's about increasing pressure within the thorax and therefore in the in the abdomen uh, and you use it during heavy lifting or bowel movements now we also use it to test uh, and orthopedically test for uh, lumbar spine disc herniations but that's a whole other topic kettle of fish but we do it using by closing the glottis the trachea itself is the windpipe and it extends from the larynx down through the mediastinum and uh, and goes down to the bronchi that go into the lungs. Um, it's three layers. The mucosa is a, a ciliated pseudostratified epithelium with goblet cells, so it makes mucus. And the, the cilia actually sweep the mucus up towards the larynx. Uh, and so that we end up swallowing it, it pushes it right up past the, um, the epiglottis and it goes down the esophagus. That mucosa is supported by a submucosa, uh, and then that's all surrounded by uh, an adventitia, which gives the, the tube some structure. Now, in that adventitia, there is some cart hyaline cartilage rings that are it's kind of C-shaped, and they hold the tube open. They act like the the wire in a dryer tube or in a vacuum cleaner hose um, that's, uh, that holds the tube open, prevents it from collapsing as the air passes through. There's... Uh, a muscle that connects the the C of the cartilage rings, and it's called the tracheolus muscle, and it's used uh, to cough and help expel mucus. And the uh, and the esophagus actually sits right behind the tracheolus. Now, the very last ring of the cartilage has uh, has a a ridge on it called the carnia, and this is the very um, highly innervated piece of tissue um, that that when it's stimulated causes the cough, cough reflex. Um, you may have heard it as people are trying to, uh, for various reasons, hold smoke in their lungs and they start little coughing fits. Uh, that's because the carnia is getting stimulated and uh, it's pretty hard not to cough. So it ends up looking like this. The esophagus is back here. By the way, when food gets caught in your throat or as you swallow, the esophagus pushes into the lumen of the trachea here. And that's why something caught in the esophagus actually prevents breathing and people can choke and the Heimlich maneuver and all of that stuff.
hopefully this looks familiar. Uh, we've seen the, almost this exact slide uh, in the lab. So now the uh, at the just below the cornea, the trachea branches into two bronchi, two primary bronchi, one going to each lung. And then the primary bronchi branch into the uh, secondary bronchi, which go to each lobe of each lung, and then the tertiary bronchi, which go to each segment of each lobe of each lung, and then the quaternary and the fifth order and sixth order, down to 23 orders. There's 23 orders of branching from the main trunk of the... Uh, of the trachea so and it looks like a tree so we call it the respiratory tree the bronchial tree so um, the primary bronchi are the only bronchi that are really found outside of the long tissue itself the uh, once it enters the lung it branches into the secondary bron bronchi um, it doesn't matter that much. The right main bronchus is, is wider and shorter, more vertical than the left, but you can you can see it uh, when you when you look at the pictures, right? And so each secondary one goes to a lobe. It's called the lobar bronchi, and they go into the segmental bronchi, which are the tertiary ones, and they just divide and divide and divide. By the time we get down to the bronchioles. There's less and less um, cartilage, rings holding them open, and more and more muscle in the walls uh, so that we can open and close different areas of the lungs so they, they can, they bronchioconstrict and bronchiodilate. But they're pretty small. They're less than a millimeter in diameter. And by the time they actually get down to feeding the alveoli, they're half a millimeter in diameter. Um, so very small twigs on the branches. So looks like that from the trachea. The carnea is here, primary bronchi, the secondary bronchi, the tertiary bronchi, the four, five, six, seven, etc. Right to 23.